What's really good? It's your boy Spider Man is here for Heel Kaiju with another week of the news and feuds you might have missed here in the WWE. It's getting heated on the way to the first event of the summer, Money in the Bank, so let's get it cracking. This is your standing 10 count. Starting us off, WWE is returning to broadcast television as a new deal for the blue brand has been struck. Fox will have the rights to SmackDown in 2019 as WWE has accepted their bid for $1 billion, that's with a big ass B, over the next five years. What does this mean for SmackDown? Well, as reported by Forbes, the blue brand will be moving back to Friday nights, but it's still up in the air whether it will be live or if it will be returning to the heyday of Tuesday night TV tapings. If tapings are in SmackDown's future, be prepared for a future of dancing around spoilers. You can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you just might find that you get a Jinder versus Roman Reigns match at Money in the Bank. Yes, the big dog is not getting a second chance at a slot in the Money in the Bank match, thanks to the meddling of Jinder Mahal with the full weight of Stephanie McMahon and the authority helping to solidify his absence. This singles match could, in theory, help both Jinder and Roman if played out right, with Jinder being seen as a threat and having potentially a good to great match with Roman under his belt and with Roman possibly telling a great story in the ring without the universal title as a backdrop to fall back on. Plus, these past couple of weeks have been perfect in setting up this feud, ramping up the animosity between both men, so we'll see how it pans out in June. This happened. Raw continues to fill up spots in the women's Money in the Bank ladder match. On Monday night, Natalya and Dana Brooke faced off against two members of the Riot Squad, Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan, in a fatal four-way match. Now, to Coach's credit, when he stated that Natalya and Brooke would be at a disadvantage with the team of Logan and Morgan, it made sense if you tilt your head and squint your eyes just so. You have two team members who are easily on the same page and can effectively split the attention of their two opponents. For the most part, that's what happened. The duo managed to keep Natalya and Brooke's attention split perfectly until Logan and Natalya were the last two women in the ring. The Hart family member locked in the sharpshooter on Sarah Logan, forcing her to tap and securing a slot in the ladder match. For the past couple of weeks, WWE has teased a possible schism between Rusev, the ravishing Russian Lana, and Aiden English, citing that maybe someone in Rusev's inner circle is holding him back. Since then, Rusev has landed a spot in the Money in the Bank ladder match, and this week, Lana has that same chance with Aiden English not only introducing her with a chant of, Lana is the best, Lana number one. <laughs> Lana is the best, Lana number one. <laughs> but also by accompanying her to ringside in her qualifying match against Billy Kay. The match itself was short, very little offense with Lana sneaking a face buster and securing the win courtesy of a distraction from English, but now we have the possibility of there being a first ever Mr. and Mrs. Money in the Bank. After Shinsuke Nakamura's somewhat controversial win last week, the self-proclaimed artist earned the right to choose the stipulation for his match with AJ Styles for the WWE title at Money in the Bank. Nakamura as a heel is so refreshing as he pairs perfectly with AJ Styles' clean-cut persona by being an unrepentant troll, and during this segment, he did just that. He needled and toyed with the phenomenal one, even going as far as suggesting a pillow fight for their match before attempting to sneak attack AJ. This backfired initially, with AJ beating Nakamura through the crowd and around the arena, but Nakamura gets the upper hand. With a Kinshasa, Shinsuke fells AJ and leaves the crowd in a 10 count before declaring that their match at Money in the Bank will be a last man standing match. The club, now the Good Brothers, didn't seem to reach their potential on Monday Night Raw. What we got from them was missed opportunities and lackluster segments despite them being great veteran talents. Remember the old day? Yeah. On Tuesday, the duo faced off against the Usos for a chance to battle it out against the Bludgeon Brothers for the SmackDown Tag Titles. With the Usos on a tear lately, it's hard not to expect the real brothers to dispatch with the good brothers and get another rematch against Luke Harper and Eric Rowan in June. 
Instead, after a great match between the two teams, the Usos succumb to the Magic Killer as the Good Brothers surprise the WWE Universe and have a chance to build momentum leading to their match at Money in the Bank. Feel the glow! Naomi may not have been featured prominently recently on SmackDown, but her year since WrestleMania has still been on the rise. After winning the inaugural Women's Battle Royal on the grandest stage of them all, Naomi was tasked with taking on former Absolution member Sonya Deville on her second chance to qualify for Money in the Bank, claiming that since she didn't lose nor tap out, she should get a chance. Apparently, management agreed. The former MMA fighter and the Girl of Glow took to the ring with Deville controlling the pace and much of the match with her technical prowess, but it was Naomi that slinked away with the roll up for the victory as she claimed her spot at Money in the Bank. For a second week in a row, we got ourselves another dream match that just months ago, we never thought would happen. Jeff Hardy, Daniel Bryan, just saying that gives me goosebumps. With the winner facing off against Samoa Joe for their shot at a second chance to qualify for Money in the Bank, and with Joe ringside, Hardy and Bryan kicked off a match that you could argue was the best that WWE put on this week. Hardy's high-flying offense and Bryan's technical skills kept the crowd fully engaged, and you know what? If you get a chance to watch it yourself, do so. In the end, D. Bry locks in a heel lock to force the United States champion to tap out and gifting us with another dream match, Daniel Bryan versus Samoa Joe next week on SmackDown. In more news for WWE, we got a finalized list of participants for this year's United Kingdom tournament with the winner securing a title shot against Pete Dunne for the WWE United Kingdom title. Now, Last year, we got some new household names in the tournament as the two-day event was a showcase of diverse talents and styles that would shape the division. This year, we hope to get much of the same with a little twist into the mix. 205 Live alumni Drew Gulak and Jack Gallagher are set to make their appearance during the tournament. Speaking of 205 Live, during the WWE's tour in the UK last week, we caught glimpses of Joseph Connors, Flash Gordon Webster, and James Drake during the hour. The rest of the big names for the tournament are on the WWE.com website, which we'll link below, so you can see if your favorite is going to be in attendance. And that's 10. If you feel we missed anything important, please feel free to leave a comment down below and make sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you can be alerted of all of our content in the future. Once again, I'm Spotted Minutes chucking the deuces up the Hill Kaiju and reminding you to keep smashing.